Paul Jeffkins wants to make sweeping changes to how his family uses electricity. But not everyone at home shares his passion. No, it's mainly me. I'm the driving force behind it. <laughs> and they just follow. But they'll learn over the years, you know, especially the kids when they grow up. They'll know what I'm talking about. Well, what's it like living with someone who's energy oh. conscious, Nicole? Can be annoying. <laughs> In what way? When he's walking around screaming at everyone to turn lights off. Improving energy efficiency is not just a mission for the Jeffkins. We all need to rethink our wasteful grid. Nearly 70% of the energy released from burning coal is lost at the power station. Another 10% or so leaks away as electricity is transmitted through the wires. To find extra capacity to meet peak demand, Paul Myers from Ausgrid is leading the Smart Grid Smart City trial in Newcastle. We've installed a concentrated number of gas-fired fuel cell generators and battery storage devices, and there's also a large amount of existing rooftop solar generation. If we can use these devices to reliably reduce peak demand on the grid, then ultimately that's a cost saving for uh, the electricity companies, which can be passed on to all consumers. Our electricity grid is designed to push energy one way from central power stations to here. But what if you could redesign the grid to allow two-way energy flow where the houses themselves become the power stations? Now, this suburban street in Newcastle is making that change. As part of its two-year trial, Ausgrid has installed 25 fuel cell generators in this area, five in Paul Street alone. It's a whole neighbourhood effort, really. Well, yeah, yeah. Just Everyone's sort of pitched in and they want to get involved in it, so it's great. His blue gen fuel cell is quietly humming beside the house, oh. running on natural gas and air. But this little baby over here, this is a blue gen, and it's supplying all the hot water needs to the house, 200 litres a day. It doesn't rely on the sun or the wind, so you know you're going to get one and a half kilowatts every hour, day in, day out, every day of the year. That means in a year, it generates twice the annual power needs of an average home. And by using the waste heat, it hits 85% efficiency. That's three, even four times better than the coal-fired grid. To find out how it works, I've come to where it was invented, ceramic fuel cells in Melbourne. Blue Gen produces electricity at the highest uh, efficiency of any device that converts hydrocarbon fuels into electricity. It's a grey box, what's inside? Well, uh, it looks complicated, but it's actually really, really simple. So there are three inputs into the fuel cell. Air, fuel and water, all going into the stack, which is in here. And then the stack processing that, making electricity and heat. And what's happening when this is operating? What kind of temperatures does it work at? This system here is running. It's in here, literally about three inches from my hand. There's 750 degrees C, so and you can see my hand's not being burnt to blisters, so uh, it's not that hot at all on the outside. The heat doesn't come from burning the gas, but from an electrochemical reaction that begins here. We're dressed for the clean room because this is where fuel cells are born. It all starts with this very thin film, silicon film, which is drawn through the machines and coated with a series of ceramic bases. Four layers are bonded together and then baked at high temperatures. They're a secret recipe of metallic catalysts that release electrons and ceramic conductors that carry them away as electric current. The layers in each fuel cell work like a battery, with gas at the anode and air at the cathode, separated by a ceramic electrolyte. What the system does is it breaks apart those oxygen electrons they travel through the fuel cell and they hook up with the hydrogens and the carbons from the methane. They go out as waste gas and we collect those electrons and that becomes the electricity that we ultimately turn into power for your home. Simple. This is the heart of the Blue Gen unit, the power pack, it's called the fuel stack. And each fuel stack is made up of 204 of these smaller fuel cells. Created by Australians, built by robots. Although most are currently sold in Europe, 
Brendan sees an opportunity to take advantage of Australia's abundant gas reserves. If I have a gas bottle that I was using for, say, my barbecue, it would take about 10 days to empty that out. So it makes a lot of power from just a little bit of gas. And at six or seven cents per kilowatt hour, that's a fraction of the cost compared to electricity from the grid. It sounds great to Paul as he monitors the BlueGen's performance live on the internet. As you can see, since it's been on, it's over 7,000 kilowatts has been exported onto the grid. And uh, the saving of CO2 emissions is over five tonne. With a price tag of $40,000, Brendan says it makes more sense to buy a BlueGen if utilities paid a feed-in tariff for the electricity it puts back into the grid. Every time we deploy one, we reduce the carbon intensity of the grid dramatically. Uh, so on that basis, we're making low emission, low cost, high efficient electricity. This is the way of the future. You're making the power where you live, right where you want to use it. Not transporting it up wires and through substations. It's right here where you need it. So it's great.